let me pick up the pace in, and I'm, I'm going to make y'all move a little faster now because we got some time. We've got a, about an hour and five minutes before we get to the, the questions from the audience. But I want to just start throwing some other stuff at you that, that's occurred to me in the first hour of this conversation, in the first couple of hours of this conversation. Dyson, you first. What about the notion that Barack Obama is the first black president? He doesn't have to be. We don't want him to be the last. And there's only so far down the field he can push the ball. Maybe our expectations of him as the first are unreasonable. Well, Tavis, that's ludicrous, as Mike Tyson might say. Um, and, and, and because everybody, you know, I was the first, so I wanted to be calm and reasonable in articulating my viewpoint. But you know I'm fired up right now. All right, and, and, I, and I'm going to just take half a minute more because I want to say this. First of all, he is the first black president, but we got to remember that. Jackie Robinson was the first. Jackie Robinson wasn't the best ball player. He was the best ball player suited to exist under the conditions that white folk would impose upon him. So I'm not suggesting that Mr. Obama is not a brilliant man. I knew him earlier than most people in this building, since 91. I was with Obama when most people who were black were with Hillary Clinton, when they were calling him Barack Obama. I knew who he was. I loved him. So I take second seat to no one. I love him. I love him walking down Air Force One. I love how he walks down and hollers at people. I love how he looks at black folk. I love how he looks at white folk. I love how he gives that Negro intimacy that is communicated telepathically. I love all of the symbolic gestures that are articulated from Obama. But at the end of the day, he's Jackie Robinson. I'm waiting for Willie Mays to come behind him because Willie's got a hell of a fan. Number two. Number two, how are you going to say you just the president of black folk? No, Sherlock. We didn't know that. Of course we knew that. I'm the very person who said he got to holler at white folk and wink at us. So don't tell me that I didn't understand that you had to engage in code switching, which is the predicate for acceptance in the larger circle of white supremacist logic, so that you could then get in with a black voice. But don't get up in there and become who you said you were against to begin with. Your point is that, and, and I'm not talking about black versus white, I'm talking about right versus wrong. So my point is, you are the president of everybody, which includes me. I am from America too. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. That's in America. New Jersey ain't got to be New York to be part of America. I ain't got to be white to be part of America. Latinos asking them for something and they got something. Gay and lesbians said don't ask, don't tell, changed it. Jewish brothers and sisters said deal with Israel, deal with it. All of those are specific entities. Why is it when it comes to Negroes? Why is it when it comes to black folk? All of a sudden we are persona non grata. I tell you, Mr. Obama, to deal with the black agenda is what every president before you had to do. How are you going to be any different? Abraham Lincoln had to deal with race. George Washington had to deal with race. LBJ had to deal with race. How come you the first president that ain't got to deal with race? It wasn't a black president who passed the Civil Rights Bill. It wasn't a black president who passed the Voting Rights Act. It wasn't a black president who passed the Fair Housing Act. It wasn't a black president who dealt with fair housing. It wasn't a black president who dealt with affirmative action. You can't be like every other president. Deal with race. If you want to be great, deal with the Negro question. Now let me say this. How you gonna say this? One size does not fit all. When you go to the hospital, some people take an aspirin for hangnails. Some people take an insulin for diabetes. And some people take in chemotherapy for cancer. Ain't no such thing as a rising tide lifts all boats. You got to target your particular reality and tailor the public policy. And let me say this. First of all, everybody ain't got no boat. So you need to you need to make some funds available for boat making. Then when we get to boats, some people got them little dinghies out there, and some people got some cruise liners. And the folk with the cruise liners don't give a damn what you do anyway. So the rising tide is not going to benefit us because we are being displaced by those big cruises. How are you going to deny Negroes money? 17% almost unemployment, 9% with white folk, 12% with Latinos, and tell me it's all equal. I'm telling you this, you bailed out the notorious AIG, you bailed them out, you bailed out General Motors, but you can't bail out African American people who put together dimes and nickels and had parties for you to make sure that you could get up in the White House, and now when you get there, you can't have amnesia. Let me say this. Let me say this. Last second, Dyson. Let me, say, let me say this and I'm going to be done. 
It ain't no stimulus, it's stimulum. We ain't been stimulated. Look, when the money, as Dr. Malvo said, goes to the states, look at what monies have gone to the states. Montana and Dakota have gotten $1,200 per state resident. Those are the least diverse states in the, in the nation. The most diverse states, Texas, New Jersey, New York, Florida, got $600 per. So even by Mr. Obama's logic, if it's a race-neutral, colorblind distribution of resources, even in that setup, black folk ain't getting it. So I want to tell you this. When you talk to Mr. Obama, I love him. I love him like my brother because I'm so proud of him. Don't mistake cultural pride for political accountability. Black people think that Obama is Martin Luther King Jr. Excuse me. Martin Luther King Jr. shed blood in Memphis. From that blood and the soil in which that blood was mixed sprouted every ability of black people in a post-King era to survive. When that martyrdom rose up, it was 40 years from King's assassination to Obama's inauguration. So don't tell me you stencil his face next to King's and they're the same. You think Obama is Moses. He is not Moses. He's Pharaoh. You've got to understand that Pharaoh... I'm not dogging him. I'm talking about his office. One man is a prophet. Another man is a politician. It is time to say to Pharaoh, not let our people go. Let our resources go. Let that money go. Let that love flow. I know white folk don't want you to love us, but you came from us. Before they knew you, we loved you. We birthed you. We gave you acceptance. You were biracial, but black folk made you a black man in America. Now represent us. Don't dog us when we need you. We love you. We just want some love back.